Hey everybody, Gary McGowan here, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different, but kind of the same. Yep. It's time for another market report on the Toronto Real Estate Board, the 416 versus the 905. Lots of interesting information. So let's roll the intro and I'll talk to you real soon. Yeah, well, that's it. Toronto Real Estate Board came out with its latest numbers. And of course, there's always interesting information whenever that happens. And it's always important to understand the numbers, the fundamentals of our market. You know, Toronto Real Estate, that's a big market. And the 416 versus the 905, there's lots of information that that is in there. And it can really affect the way that we're looking at sales. And I got to tell you, the market is still really, 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 really hot. Now, there's going to be pockets and segments where perhaps that's not the case. However, let's take this all into, uh, for let's not take it for granted, but let's take it and move the needle a little bit of what that means. You know, there's certain segments of the market that will always remain hot, incredibly hot. And then there's other, other markets that, you know, typically are a little bit slower when Christmas comes, this time of year comes, winter comes, people aren't willing to get out in the cold weather and the rainy weather to go see homes. But I can tell you that showings are still incredibly high, multiple offers are still happening. And of course, in that price range, as you get over the $2 million and $3 million value, of course, that slows down a little bit. But for the entry level and your typical detached homes, it's still a hot market, my friends. Market too, depending on where you're from. Anyways, let's uh, let's do a little screen share and let's go through these slides together and these numbers together, right? Okay, 416 versus the 905 as always. And we will talk about the numbers, talk about the number of new listings, the number of sales, and, and really lay down a baseline as we've been doing for the last several months here. So first off, we're always gonna look at condos, detached, and then the townhouses. That's kind of the wheelhouse of the Toronto real estate market. And of course, depending on where you are, if you're in the Toronto core, it's gonna be condos that really is that entry level uh, home. If you're in the suburbs, the 905, if you will, the big horseshoe around Toronto, that's gonna to be your townhouses typically that drive that entry level market. So let's start here. Let's start looking at the number of new listings in the 416 and the 905. And our light blue today is November of last year of 2020. And we're gonna compare that to 2021 October and 2021 November, because it's really important to see where we were and where we came from. So last month's numbers, you can see here versus this month's numbers, and we're down a little bit with new listings. Probably typical of our real estate cycle if you look back over the number of years. Remember last year's fall was really out of the ordinary with a lot of listings coming to market. But as you can see here, we're down ever so slightly in, in the number of new listings, both the 416 and the 905. Okay, well, let's look at the number of sales. It says October there on the screen. However, I can assure you that it is November. These are the November sales. And here we are from last year. And this is last month and where we are this month. So down ever so slightly compared to last month and up year over year, in fact, uh, on average. So we're down about 5.5% from last month in the 416 and down 3.9% in the 905 area on an average of 78 That takes into a lot of other sales in that area based on that. So moving forward, let's look at the average price all home types, this is all home types uh, across those, those uh, the 416, 905, and I thought I'd do something unique. The York region has had an incredible run over the last several months, and, and we wanna show those numbers too. So in the 416, last year, you can see there, and, and in the 905 and in York region. So we're all hovering basically between 875 and 1.1 uh, last year's numbers. Now this year, or sorry, in October, of course, we saw a big climb there, and where does that leave us for November of 2021? Well, 
depending on where you are, it's either down ever so slightly or up. So if you're looking in Toronto, perhaps last month in November was a good month to purchase versus October. And if you look in the 905, it's the opposite, right? October would have been a better month to buy or a better month to sell in November. And if you look at New York in, in York region, of course, we've had tremendous increases in this area, just phenomenal increases in this area. And you can see our average uh, month over month there. So down 2.3% in the 416 area, up 4% in the 905, in York region up 1.3. However, year over year up 25.6%, all home types. If we just... Um, Pulled out the detached, which we're going to look at in, in a few moments there. Uh, there's some really strong numbers for the detached homes, as always. Okay, now let's look at all units sold uh, with condos, townhouses, and, and, and detached. The light blue is the, is the 416. Dark blue is the 905. So there's our, our number of units sold in condos. Condos is always pretty hot in the 416 area. And then there's our, our year-over-year changes and all the rest of the information there. So you can see the 905 is always going to lag behind in con condos. It's just that we don't have the same number that the Toronto Core does. However, the flip side is true for the townhouses. And of course, look at the detached, uh, many more detached homes in the, in the 905 area. And you can see the year over year changes. So condos are way up over 40% and, um, and the townhouses are down ever so slightly. And so are detached, interestingly enough, but that's just based on what's available right? Because we know when things come to market, typically within 14 days, they're gone. So that's just the number of listings that, that are available to buyers. Moving forward, uh, all uh, the average prices across um, the condos, townhouses, and detached. So if we spe specifically look at the 416, which is the light blue, you can see the condos there at 745, townhouses 981, and 1 1.8 for detached. And in the 905 area, of course, as you get out, condos are a little bit less expensive. So 646 is our number there. And then in the townhouses, 955 lagging a little bit. And then you can see the detached home. So we'll call that 1.5, about a $300,000 difference. Now, the 905 area, I should preface, it's a big area. It's basically from, from Oshawa all the way up through Stovall, Newmarket, Bradford, and around um, picking up pieces of Vaughn, of course, all of Vaughn and everything else like that. Richmond Hill, Markham, and then all the way around into uh, Brampton, Mississauga, Peel area. So those regions are, are awfully big and we're going to have a lot of price variances in there. But if you were to look at some of the prices like in York region, uh, Vaughan, uh, King City, that is really going to elevate those prices. Of course, as you get down into uh, some of that, the Lake Ontario uh, properties right on, you know, Burlington Way, Oakville area, that's going to change the pricing as well. There's our year over year change. So condos are definitely uh, up 16, 20%, depending on where you are. Townhouses, 19% uh, higher in Toronto. And look at this in, in the 905 area, up 31%. And that's just based on uh, accessibility to buyers, right? That they can enter into that price range uh, a lot easier than they can. And then, of course, look at uh, 22 percent and 32 percent increase year over year in the detach, which is quite incredible. All units sold. Okay, so let's look at this over the last almost 12 months now. We're almost at the end of the year, and this is really impressive. So we've got our numbers from 2020. These are units sold, and and you can kind of see, of course. You know, COVID played a role in this last year and it has this year as well. You can see those amazing numbers there for this year. And I don't think enough people are talking about this, in fact, because here's our numbers. In 2016, you've heard me talk about this in the past. We had a record-breaking year for number of homes sold in 2016 at 113,041. 
absolutely fantastic. And over the last couple of years, it dipped down and then it started to come back up, right? And here's where we're at. Last year, we were at 95,000 homes sold, which was a decent year to come back, especially working through COVID. And you can see the real slow months in there in April and May. We had to really fight back to get those numbers. And then this year, Yay! this is big. This should be this should be talked about tremendously. 115,762, which is a brand new record for Toronto Real Estate Board, number of homes that have transacted on it. And we still have one month to go. And typically, you know, if we look at last year's numbers, we were at about 4,000, 5,000 homes sold. So if we add that, uh, we're going to be at over 120,000 uh, homes sold on the Toronto Real Estate Board. That is fantastic. I've talked about this before. Let's flip to this. We've talked about this before. We've talked about the fact that when we go out shopping for homes, one of the biggest complaints that we always get as real estate agents, there's not enough inventory. I'm always competing. I'm always in multiple offers. I don't like it. We need more inventory. We need more inventory. Yet, I just showed you that we have just surpassed and blown through our record-breaking year in 2016. And now... We will sell more homes than we ever have before on the Toronto Real Estate Board, yet the biggest complaint is there's not enough homes. There's not enough homes for sale. And let me throw this at you as well. Over the last, we'll call it 20 months, give or take, a month or two or a day or two, we have not had any, any immigration into the Toronto area. So we've had this tremendous uh, record-breaking year of home sales with zero immigration. So when immigration starts to ramp back up, what is that going to do to our home values? What is that going to do to the number of buyers out there and the people that are looking for a home, not only to buy, but also to rent, to lease, right? It is going to do some, it's going to have a major impact on, on our, our real estate um, market here is what I'm trying to say. So Sometimes you got to look at, you got to peel the onion away, take a step back and digest all the information. But these are all things that I look at and I read, you know, tremendous um, economists like Benjamin Tal and, and others. And they're talking about things like that. And they're talking about what are the interest rates going to do? And perhaps we'll do a video on the interest rates. But we had a record breaking year with zero immigration and we still have one more month to go. Interesting stuff. Okay, moving forward, almost done here. Um, very good. Treb, here, let's look at the average prices over the last number of years. You can see there, I've shown this slide before. Back in 2011, started at $511,000. And today, year to date, uh, we're at a million ninety two of um, in, 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 on Treb. And that's your average price with an increase of 113%. And if you're like me, I own a detached home, have done for many, 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 many years. And what's that average price look? Well, back in 2011, it was five valued at 582. And today it's valued at 1.4. The average price should be 1.431 with an increase of 146%, 146%. So We've almost, almost, not quite, uh, tripled the value of the home in a matter of 10 years. Those are phenomenal numbers. And you've heard me talk about this in the past, and I'm a true believer in generating wealth through real estate. So if your home has done, has had that type of return for you, and it's, it's something that you believe in, which is the Toronto real estate market. And we've seen the prices go up and down. However, remember, real estate's best observed over time. And if it's going if, if it's can, if it's, if it can have this amount of appreciation over a number of years, why is it that many people only own one? Right? There is a great opportunity here to look at this. We're not looking at short term. We don't look at real estate short term. We look at it long term. And then, and if we bought in 2016 or 2017, perhaps we were a little bit annoyed at the market. However, over time, that's where the returns are coming in from, right? So if this has been your best investment, why do you only own one property? That's my question for you today. Very, very good. Okay, well, that kind of wraps up 
uh, what we're doing for the market real estate uh, report and the heartbeat of the market and what's going on. It is still a strong seller's market. Typically for it to be a balanced market, we would need about three months of inventory. And I can tell you, we are, we barely even have three weeks of inventory almost right across the whole entire Toronto real estate board. I can tell you that I am still bringing properties to market this time of year. People would say, why would you do that? Why would you wait? Well, one of the reasons is I know the market I'm in today. And the second reason is when I look at it and the homes that I'm bringing to market, there is nothing else available. So why do I want to bring it to market in January and compete when I can bring it today and not compete? Meaning there's no other competition for buyers to go look at. They only can come to mine because that's the only one that I have for, or that's the only one that's up for sale. So there's always ways to look at it and there's always interesting numbers to pull out of it. But remember the numbers always, always help tell the story. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's today's market report and I will be doing many more videos as we lean in, lean into the new year and I look forward to seeing everybody on the next video of course do not forget there's the button do not forget to connect uh, with us on YouTube hit that like button and the little bell and everything else that YouTube tells us to do once again thanks for watching the video and I'm really excited to see you on our next video bye for now